welcome, Michael. Yeah, yeah. Before anybody says uh, you should be passing on the right, he was uh, exiting on the right side. So, you know, he's allowed to pass on the right because he was just trying to get into the right lane. He's passing the guy right there. So what he's going to do is, is I want you to take a look at this. This is a very bad line of sight, and that's because you're so close to these, these big trailers, okay? Uh, this is actually that the guy in the trailer, the truck driver, cannot see you with this, cannot see you where you're at. Okay, he just he just can't. His you can't even see his mirrors, so he can't see you. So when it comes to that, you got to be very careful. So he's gonna be moving over here. All right, did a head check. He's doing what he's supposed to be doing, doing very good. You know, very very good. So right here now, what we have is uh, a couple options. Remember, we have to keep planning for where we're at. Position yourself for safety. So positioning yourself for safety involves. Line of sight, space cushion, escape routes. We have great escape routes with the shoulder, and he's going to use that in this situation, okay? So position ourselves for safety and vision. Well, in this situation, go ahead and position yourself in lane position three, okay? Lane position three is going to give you the best space cushion from that vehicle. It's also going to give you the best line of sight around the vehicle. And there's a Matt Osling welcome, baby. And it's going to get you close to your preferred escape route. So lane position three in this situation, it's not going to be every situation. This situation is going to be the best because that way you can see around it. So if you notice when he starts to go and then the truck starts to come in, he automatically starts moving towards three. He starts to automatically move towards the escape path. And that is just because it's almost like two magnets, okay? So so um, two positive magnets, you know, they try to get close to each other, but they're pushing each other away, right? So negative and positive will, will grab each other, but they'll just they keep pushing each other away when it comes to two of the same types, okay? Negative or positive. So that's the way I treat a lot of these vehicles is that if they start to come into my lane, it just automatically pushes me out. And that's what he does. But the thing is, you instinctually do that. Okay, You instinctually start to do that. Uh, what I want you to start doing is thinking about it. So once again, lane position one, two, and three. Escape path, he automatically gets pushed. I'd rather be in lane position three to start. And now he is. So that's where he goes. Very good. And then right here is the moment you start to see that he crossed the line. So that means he is going to travel into your lane. And it's not just a matter of oops, he kind of scooted over a little bit. And the reason why you know that he didn't oopsie scoot it over a little bit is because he does have a vehicle in front of him that he wants to get around probably or doesn't want to be right behind because this is actually really close. And Bohan, welcome, baby. Uh, so that's why he's doing that. So now that you know it's not just an oopsie, that it's an actual deliberate choice, you have two options. Okay, what are your options? You have escape path uh, to the front. You can decelerate. Hopefully you don't get hit by that vehicle, or you can escape to the right. What you can't do is escape to the left. Okay, so you only you have four options, and one of them is not going to be worthwhile, so you can't do that. So all you have are these three options. Um, so what are you going to do? Well, the shoulder on the right side is actually pretty dang good. And, and it doesn't make it to where I have to worry about the person behind me hitting me. I don't have to, you know, I'm already going 74 miles per hour, so I don't have to accelerate to a hundred. And another thing is once, if you have a 300 CC, maybe a 400, 500 CC and 74, you're starting to top it out and you don't really have a lot left. So acceleration might not be the best option. Your best option would be just to maintain speed, maybe decelerate a little bit, move off to the right. And that's exactly what he did. And I know a lot of this looks like common sense, but the thing is, a lot of people don't think about this. So they what they really think about is all I can do is break. And that's when you get those panic breaks. So I want you to know you have multiple options, multiple tools in your toolbox, and this will allow you to stay safe on the road. And yes, it's a scary close call. And... And yes, you got pushed off the road, but here's the thing, understanding why and how and what to do and, and the different paths you can do, the planning that you can do, the situational awareness, it, it almost feels like it's just a, it's a natural thing that happens. And when, that, when, it, when it feels like it's a natural thing, it's not a big deal, you don't get so upset afterwards and it doesn't ruin your ride. It doesn't make you scared. It doesn't make you scared to ride. It doesn't piss you off to where now you have a perceived notion of other people. And it allows you to kind of detach yourself from the emotional aspect of it uh, to where you are just now focused on writing. And isn't that what you just want to do? Just focus on writing and have a good time? And that's what you want to do.